their prior wars. Uh, Genshin Clash actually getting the tip off though on total destruction, 97.2% for them, while ZBB picked up 91.8% in their war against Shark Assassin, a team that's already been eliminated. I think Genshin Clash have got the tip of the hat from me in this war. Definitely uh, an advantage I would expect coming in, but not necessarily a decisive one. We'll see how this first attack comes in from Sec Death. Yeah, and we have this queen charging into that eating compartment. This opening, pretty nicely abused, but the question is, what's this plan? He had the wall break at the top side, so this is giving us a big question mark if this is planned that the queen is charging in here. Defending King should be easily taken down with this headhunter. Coming a couple of seconds too late, with, which is forcing this rage, actually. And this next wall break is supposed to get maybe the king in there, but the funnel is not really there either, so... What is he doing right now? There's the jump, which is giving him the power to get the queen wherever he wants. This wall break is giving him the connection, which is still leaving the possibility of leaving the question mark what exactly he tried to do at this bottom side, because now he has no wall break to get into this inferno tower. The queen? Oh, no. There was, there was the last second queen ability, but she's surviving for now, but the multi is keep staying up. Yeah, it looks to me like that queen ability was forced in the duel against the enemy queen. In fact, she's not even going to get the target onto that multi-inferno now. Instead, that's going to be a lot of fire of the healers and forces out the invisibility spell. But she still won't go for the center multi-inferno. Those healers are going to be terrified, melted down. Cannot help that queen now. Log Watcher all alone. This is not going according to plan, Itsu. No, we said it in the beginning that this queen walking into the ear compartment was not how he was uh, like going through the plan like this. The jump set for the king is not getting him anywhere. And now he should get to the 50% mark easily. But the town hall is still on the menu and he needs to take that down. No warden ability whatsoever, but at the same time, no sweeper pushing in that side. But this one, Patrick, I'm not sure if that's a good choice. He needs to like use all of those dragon riders. And uh, well, he this dragon get rider is getting shot at quickly. So, well, one dragon rider less. Here they're coming on in now, fanning out a little bit. Air defense up the top does go down Ooh. nice and early. Good use of the freeze there, but he catches a tornado trap. It actually did spin that Dragon Rider out of the range of that single target Inferno, so maybe might have saved the Town Hall kill because of that, but still, Sec Debt is going to be at a loss for percentage. One of the lowest percentage hits that we've seen today. Two stars and just barely pushing up into the 60s now. This is an excellent opportunity for ZBB to try to get the turnaround right out of the beginning rounds. Yeah, especially like what is an attack like this doing to the team, like to the morale and everything. Like they had, like this is their first attack right now and they know already, okay, percentage wise, it's going to be a tricky match for us to come back from because percentage wise is 60% two star. We have seen obviously a couple of slip ups from those teams over the day. At the same time, you cannot count on getting those incredible defenses every single match. So they already have to count on and knowing that they have to get one star more than ZBB. And this is uh, not an easy way to stay in there, especially for those new teams, which have might, like, which might have not the experience on this big stage. So this is a huge impact. Now, especially ZBB can have an even better advantage getting a three star because this would put up even more pressure we are seeing one of the most powerful strategies right now in the game, which is the Pekka Smash. And he's starting things off with the Queen, not with the with the Warden Walk. And he's going, I guess, going to walk around that eagle compartment to enter at that scatter shot with his Queen, with his Smash. Yeah, the bigger those compartments are, as you just saw in that previous attack by Sec Deck, the more difficult it is to predict which way that queen is going to go. Poor funneling can ruin an assault, and there is so much planning required to know exactly the pathing that they'll take. Dao D looks better set up than the previous strike, being able to take down that Eagle Artillery, which is on the edge of the base. It's now three Inferno Towers in a line down the center, and the bottom side with that Town Hall, uh, that is probably going to result in Valdi doing a little bit of a pincer play here now with the Pekkas, expecting them to come in from a different angle uh, as the engagement now up here on the top side is looking to be sealed off and completed. Gets the lock on the enemy queen for a good duel. He's even sent in the warden upside right next to this queen though, and so they're going to be able to reunite after all. 
Yeah, no, no, those super wizards do not seem that they are going inside. He is missing all of those uh. super wizards inside the core, which is uh, not the best, especially against the Hound Clan car. So the defending, um, the defending headhunters are getting taken down by this Lord Launcher. But can he open up all the way? So far, he has done a great job opening most of the things. He has the Warden ability, and he's even closing in on the Town Hall. When is he going to use that? Now the perfect Warden ability. He's even catching those loons at the bottom side. This so far is looking good for him. He has one jump to get into the back and get a compartment. But the Royal Champion might catch that Town Hall Poison, which is never a good thing for you. You want to have the Royal Champion finishing off the base. When is he going to place the jump? He can jump the Queen further inside, but... Not sure with this jump, he's not going to get his P.E.K.K.A. into the scatter. Yeah, really unfortunate. Lots of the Super Wizards out in the interior didn't get them in for the DPS that he really was l relying on. But Royal Champion is safe after all. And with the hop over that wall, it looks like the heroes are going to be able to knock down this multi-target Inferno. You know, it's going to take them a while, focusing on a gold storage and an archer tower first. But Biao D doesn't have a whole lot of cleanup left to do. 39 seconds left. He even has a couple of swag spells to drop here on the top side. Freezes the Tesla, and that is going to be it. Knock it down, and it's all smiles here. A little bit of an anime move there. Adjusts his glasses after a convincing victory. And we will go into the first round finished with ZBB in the lead. I just love the reaction always from the players, like just knowing as soon as they're like having the safe three star smiling and knowing that they have done it, relief is in their face just as an expression. So really nicely done. And now this is, like I said, the pretty much worst case scenario for um, yeah, like with this start with like a 60% two star, this is with having a three star on defense, this is not how we would like to get into this el elimination match because as you said earlier, the loser of this match is going to get knocked out of this competition. So Gensan really has to step things up and this against this base with the Blizzard Dragon attack. No Dragon Riders, just 10 Dragons onto this interesting anti two star legend style looking base with a lot of storages in front of that town hall. Yeah, we saw a lot of Dragon Family earlier in the day. Genson was happy uh, to, to bring it to bear, but uh, Pedro OC this time not going to be bring, bringing the Dragon Riders or, uh, uh, you know, Inferno Dragons this time. It's just a full in regular Dragon Army. Uh, he's going to be getting a great blizzard, though, straight into the bottom compartment. Lots of super wizard damage chaining off on big targets here. Another invisibility wow. goes down, and it's even more lightning fast strikes against the enemy heroes now. Zapping with some additional uh, collateral damage onto the Archer Queen. Big chunk of the base taken out, but was that worth the commit there, Itsu? Um, I think so for sure, like he invested quite a bit, but just the path in which he created with this looks already incredible. Now he's using those dragons to get this Lava Hound out of the way and take a look at this pathing. Then the heroes from the top side, he has one war break to get into the, right close to the eagle overall. Those defending pups are getting taken down from the dragons. And now he's getting started with those test loans and the dragons right into the scatter. Interesting decision, as you said earlier. Only dragons, no dragon riders. This is uh, pretty unusual. Those dragons, they really need to get pushed back inside because the king is a little bit slow with the funneling, but it should be in time. Well, whether it's set to single or multi, those uh, Inferno Towers can be really difficult for dragons. It's going to be a lot of damage stacked in early on, and with Scatter Shot and Eagle Artillery firing away the whole time, that's a lot of splash damage for Pedro to deal with. Fortunately for him, though, the Life War from this Grand Warden has been really well positioned the entire time, protecting all these dragons as best they can. And as he pass along to the bottom side of the base now, there's not a whole lot of value for the splash here. Wizard Tower and Scatter Shot not going to be able to chain out the multiple dragons at the same time, and with two abilities left to use, both that Archer Queen Royal Cloak and the Royal Champion Ray to toss that shield off. This is looking ever more likely to be a triple. Yeah, this is looking good, but at the same time, though, this Royal Champion is having to face off against the defending hero right there. Luckily, the King is already so far down. Quite, quite a bit damaged. And with that Queen ability, it's looking crushed. This Tesla farm at the bottom side is not going to have any chance, especially considering that this Queen is having her ability left. So Pedro is getting it done after a rough start. They're turning it around and they're showing, we are here to play. We don't give up and we're showing that with this attack. So really good recovery in this match. Question though is, 
Is it going to impress ZBB or is not or is it not? Because so far they have did an incredible job swagging like two to four spells in the first attack already. So uh yeah, things are looking good for ZBB. This wait a second. Hold on. Wait a second. Tornado! Oh my goodness! Itsu! We called it too soon! The clan castle in the center! makes Pedro OC the second player now to get a two-star 99%. Oh, that that was painful to watch. Um, let's agree on that we both together jinxed this and not like only one of us. Because this was... Oh, this was looking so good. It was looking so good. And then just this clan cast and especially this NATO trap causing the time frame at the end. Now also, I was already celebrating the three-star I guess I was a bit too early with that one. And now everything what I just said is like going into the opposite pretty much. And well, now we have the next attack from ZBB and they're going with hybrid. With not too many hybrid troops, only 13 miners and 8 hog riders. That's not too many to be honest. Yeah, that was just heart-wrenching to watch. You could pinpoint the moment when his soul left his body. He looked just as confident as we did that that was going to be the triple. I guess maybe he should have punched that Archer Queen ability a little bit sooner for the additional DPS. Yeah, there's no... Wait, wh where is the headhunter? Okay, no headhunter whatsoever, which is a kind of questionable thing because it's not only like making sure that the queen is like obviously staying alive but as well like just in general it's giving you a couple of seconds and we just saw how important a couple of seconds can be now the queen charge into the top side which is uh, an uncommon thing with those hybrid troops because he's going to have the hybrid with his um, with his king and the war break did not work he tried to war break into the expo which did not pay off now he has a big problem because he's relying on that queen to wall break or like break herself through the correct wall. The hybrid has started, but the hybrid, we already talked about that, is not as powerful as you might think. So everything's relying on this push to get the town hall. And I'm not sure if that's going to look too good. Breeze on the multi in the center, but the queen's already engaged with the enemy royal champion. Forces out the ability and there's more scattershot damage stacking in on her. The multi's going to get the healers now. Pushed back a little bit by the sweeper. They will stay a little bit healthy. This queen, can't she stay alive? Forced out an invisibility on top. But let's pan down to the bottom now where we can see the main phase of the attack coming in. It's Hog Riders splitting up and getting a big lot of have right smack in their face. A minute 17 for trying to clean up, but they haven't even gotten the town hall down yet. WQ17 has got the most risky deploy in this entire war so far. And I don't know if he's going to get the town hall. Spun around the Royal Champion is out of commission. Oh no. They just had to keep to, to keep two story if actually, but this attack might just fall short. I don't want to call it too early again, but he has no abilities left. He has one bedrack. There's the wall break to get the queen maybe later into the compartment again. The king is following that path of the wall break soon. The healers are switching. This might be a good thing for him. The queen is following nicely, but see the town hall is so scary. There is a Black Mind to take down this healer. The Queen is now in range of the Town Hall damage. Can she make it? The Town Hall is looking strong. The Bay Dragon is just placing it. The Queen is going for the Clan Whoa! Castle. And the Town Hall is staying alive. This means you can see it in his reaction. He's not happy with that one. And this is bringing Gensan back into the match with this attack. They're getting this one star, which means both teams are at those four stars. And this is a turnaround which we did not see coming, but what, what, that is incredible. This match has got more swings than a playground, Itsu, and we are seeing it go back and forth now to Gensen with a one star. Still a very high percentage, 96. This is going to equalize the star count for these two teams, and ZBB will incredibly to say this still be ahead despite a one star that they just put up because Gensen has failed the triple and the percentage is going to keep them actually quite comfortably in the lead yeah but oh we need now a three star for against on clash as you said they're like still cbb is in the lead wait wait what is this clone wait what is he doing 
He's just cloning away on this eagle. I have never seen something like this. Is like a two loon Zui. I, I'm just like really, really impressed by the creativity level right there. Really cool idea, but maybe it was too much investment. Let's see if I it actually was. So. If it actually was, because that were quite a few spells. Yes, yeah, six spell plates on the right side compartment there. He does save the battle blimp, uh, which is sometimes used for a similar sort of effect here, but really dumping a lot of spells out of the window. Uh, not what you want to see, especially for a mass drag attack that really relies on those rages to get to the back end of a pretty deeply spread out base. The funneling on the interior is really nice, though. I gotta say, they're gonna be able to get these multi-target infernos pretty quickly, uh, but that left side corner is gonna be a tricky wicket to be able to snap down. We have finally got the battle blimp to help out with the Archer Queen stab into that compartment, push it on in, and maybe add a Royal Champion to this. It could still turn out to be a triple. Yeah, the sweeper right now is being the biggest problem for those dragons. They're getting pushed back and pushed back non-stop. And with this heavy back, and we have the ground expo, we have the sing in front of so a lot of things are still up. But this queen actually breaking into the base might be a good thing for him, as long as the Royal Champion is getting a lot of value. But wait a second, there is actually the Lava Hound coming out of the clan castle. Queen is dealing with that one. Yes, the poison there, the king with the ability. The Royal Champ did not get too much value. Maybe the Royal Champ was on the wrong side. Maybe he should have deployed the Royal Champ behind the king for the tanking. But now everything is relying on this queen. The queen can enter and leave the base. And he knows already that this attack is going to be close. Queen, everything is going to rely on that queen pathing. If she's going to skip or not skip that defending scatter shot. Yeah, this is really deadly with the scatter right staring down a huge clump of troops. Oh, it gets a perfect shot off too. Knocks the Barbarian King, but doesn't finish off the Unicorn. That healing might come in clutch. She needs the Queen to go into this compartment though. Oh man, she is just pathing around and not finding the right targets. She's got her ability left yet though. It's gonna not get forced out quite yet. Oh, oh no. no. He pops the ability, and now she's just not going to get the DPS boost. Wait, maybe the archers can tank long enough. This is right now still so close. Depending on what the scatter shot is shooting, oh, no. he can still make this. Every single archer is getting shot, and now the queen. One shot. Wait a second. Can no. she make this? What? Zero hit points. This is this is so close. This is a 99.999%. This was so incredible close. He was so unlucky with that queen path thing. But, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The, the idea with the clone was really, really special because no one ever would have tested that. And he's falling short with like 1 HP of that scatter. Well, in terms of creativity, special effects brought to bear were stunning. Uh, but FX just does not get that last little oomph over the wall. I was hoping that the queen would go interior of the compartment, be able to get the early lock onto that scatter shot. But ultimately, the uh, Dark Spell Factory gets the pull to the outer edge, and that is what costs him the three star. Still an opportunity now for ZBB to win their head on percentage. Maybe they can get that star lead again as well. Yeah. They are trying to do that with an Inferno Dragon Dragon Rider attack. There is the Blimp, there is the Warden Blitz, nicely done so far. The Sweeper is pushing the Warden, uh, the, the Blimp a little bit further. But that town was going to go down within seconds. But wait a second, how did that King got there? <laughs> Where's the King going? The King is on a mission to get that defending Skitter shot in the core of the base. And wait a second, is that defending Queen going to go down to the attacking King as well? That's an interesting pathing right there. Queen has to stay alive at the top side. He's trying to do that with the freeze. This back end might be possible with the king being the MVP and going for the multi tower as well. We are seeing another lightning quick strike here and LBB Liciao has already gotten this base nearly de decimated. 30% remains and he's only a minute into the attack now. Inferno Dragons are gonna be able to spread out and finish this thing off. Uh, with just an air defense on the back end, a throw from that Royal Champion shield is going to get the perfect cleanup. Knock this one down under lightning fast. Uh, blink and you missed it. Flash straight to the end. 
Uh, Lee Sao gets the triple, and ZBB are back on top once more, both on stars and percentage. Just that second attack didn't go their way, but uh, they nonetheless are going to come back over the top uh, and really give Gintz and Kasha for their money. Yeah, they're, they're looking strong. Yeah, they had this one um, risky attack with the with the Queen Charge hybrid. They tried to do this um, approach with the Queen Charge for the Eagle, which did not work out at all. But they're coming back strong with the Inferno Dragons and Dragon Riders onto this base and completely overpowering it. And I feel like it was actually one of the best things that could have happened to him, that this king broke into the core of the base, broke to the scatter, broke to the multi, broke for, like through 100 walls just to make sure that he overpowers this base. So nicely done to him. And now it's getting closer and closer for Gensa. And they need those three stars. And please don't do another 99.9 attack. Like this is this is just too brutal to watch. Like <laughs> I can feel the pain just by watching the player again. Yeah, and hey, that's why we have them up, right? We won't be able to commiserate with their losses and celebrate the wins. Next up is gonna be Esk evoking uh, a cat-like mentality with this backdrop here, ready to uh, send in with the eye of the tiger and pounce upon his prey. Biao Di's base has got big alleyway on the top northern side there, right next to the Eagle Artillery. Makes for a good early target to try to take that down, and he's going to get some funneling done there with that sneaky goblin uh, to get this queen up and around uh, for a very long walk. Yeah, he has the lock out right now selected as well, which means he tries to get go for the town hall with this queen shores. There's a lot of damage in the beginning. He has to be careful with this queen. He's already starting at the bottom side with the final way to second the queen. She does not. Oh, queen ability is wow. safe. So nicely done. Not close at all. We were not afraid. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but. He is starting with this locked entry now to get the queen further into the direction of their town hall king to the eagle to make sure that the eagle is not going to target his healers. This is like one of the worst things what can happen to a queen charge attacker if this eagle is going to be activated and is shooting at your healers. Now there's oh that's an he's going with the ground warden with the jump for the king with the ground warden ability. This is looking strong so far. The question though is. Is he going to get this Royal Champion into the core as he would like to? Because this Royal Champion is supposed to take on the core Mota Inferno Tower. Ward ability any second now to get this next Inferno Tower and the defending Royal Champion. And this so far is looking incredibly strong as long as those healers are not going to switch to the Royal Champion. Royal Champion joins in the fray and stabs down straight through the heart of the base. The middle section, multi Inferno, will get taken out. More balloons stacked on over to the right side as the main phase is getting a complement of additional firepower. But a big scatter shot's about to get a massive lock into a lot of balloons. Forces the freeze out there, and Esk is doing his best to get that town hall down as well. Toss out the Royal Champion shield and an Invis back on her as well. Another freeze spell out. Esk is a spell wizard. So many spells and the town hall is going down as well. This queen charge was beautiful. The queen staying alive. He has one minute left as if the queen ability, which could happen to be clutch to face off against the defending king. Warden is taking down the wizard tower with those loons. 50 more seconds and this attack is looking crushing. Really good job, really cool idea. And just the usage of his heroes was really impressive. As is giving Kenzan another chance. But wow, they need a defense. He looked like a concert pianist, the way the fingers were just flying across the screen there. <laughs> I hope you get a chance to rewind, because this is probably the best player cam that we've had. Being able to see both the movements on the screen uh, and just <laughs> scrolling all across and through to find exactly what he needs for exactly the right second there. Great planning to ask in the per and the perceptiveness to be able to pull off an attack like that. Not just kind of a standard run-of-the-mill type of move, but a multi-pronged hit that utilized a log launcher, a ground warden. There is a lot to break down for that attack, Itsu. Yeah, and just the timing, everything on the end of the attack, it was really impressive to watch. And those are the attacks, which I feel like they're so admiring to, to, to watch and see how everything is unfolding because just this combination of the King and the Grand Warden is so powerful and using the Royal Champion to make sure that you're pushing it, uh, pushing um, her into the core multi-fermenter was really nicely done. But now we have the next attack and this one is going to be 
a Pega Smash onto this base. Wait a second, is he trying to go for this scatter, which might look incredible risky? But this one walk should take for should take quite some time to be honest. And this air defense is already sword shooting, which uh, takes away some damage off this owl, which makes this warden a little bit slower. Genson find their first triple, but it's going to take an entire clan to win the war. With a total of only nine stars, ZBB can still come over a top ahead of them with a triple once again here now from Venus. Long Warden Lock, like you mentioned, is going to be able to hop over this wall and deny uh, the defensive boon out here on the bottom side of the base. But still another really big alleyway. Two, in fact, uh, on the interior, going to make pathing tricky for this P.E.K.K.A. Smash. That's why Venus has brought two jump spells to hurdle over. Man, I, I got to say, Edu Debochado can build a 10-foot wall, but Venus will bring a 12-foot ladder. Uh, he is really going to go in hard against a base that seems really determined to stop a ground attack. Yeah, but with this jump, he's really getting into the core of this base nice and quickly. Even the king is walking inside, which might be a good thing, as long as he's providing the tanking which is needed. Another rage can be used to take down this hound in seconds with those um, with those super wizards still alive. There's now the hawk riders coming in and the royal champion to take down the top side, but the town hall has to fall still to make sure that this push is successful. The town is now activated with those super wizards shot. There's another rage to push into the back end. Fending royal champion has been taken down the same as. Get a shot if the Royal Champion has enough, enough power to finish off the top compartment. Yeah, that is a dicey play. Might be able to pull it off, though. She's getting another shot off. Early ability there is going to try to knock down defenses that would otherwise try to tweak her away. And with those uh, point defenses down, it's just going to be traps now, skeletons that are going to finish her off. Check out the bottom of the base now, though, where those healers are having a bit more difficulty as an air defense will get a lock onto them and force out the queen ability. But it's oh, too no. late, I think, for the defenses. Actually, hang on. That might be exactly what they needed. Pekka's are going to loop around to the top. Can the king finish off this cannon? I think he will. Yeah, it's like really, really close on time as well. He broke those Pekka inside the base now. But with this queen dying to the small bombs around the town hall, this is now a big problem um, to him because, well, it's just not being enough power in time, I feel like. Maybe he's uh, somehow able to go in with this Yak. The Pekka are going for the X with the last defense, which is actually a big threat. The Wizard at the top is trying his best, but just too many storages are alive to make sure that this is going to be a time fail. And now both teams are tied on stars. This could be a huge game changer depending on the next attacks and the percentages, because percentage-wise, we have still the lead from ZBB, but we all know one attack, All right. two attacks, the last two attacks could change this entire match because right now it's incredible close. Very close, but big percentage pickup here for ZBB makes it nearly impossible uh, for a two star from both teams to result in a win for Genson. I think it really does have to be a three star from Genson uh, and then a two star from ZBB to give the star victory to Genson. So not impossible. Uh, these wars have really gone back and forth time and again i've you know i've called it really swingy so let's see if edu debuchado can give his team the best hope that they can uh, you know strive for a triple here and now do or die will he be able to pull it off yeah and that's with the pekka smash but with those bats again you have seen it already earlier today is he going to make it work onto this base from Lisao. There's the Yeti for the found. The Ice Golem is in as well. The King, is the King going to walk inside? That's the big question. If this Arch Tower is gone, the troops might go to the outside. And the Warden ability is getting used as well. This is really bad news because this Blimp might rely onto, nope. Okay, the Blimp is on the complete other side, but not having a Warden ability in the core could cost him big time. Now the next race, the, uh, the Super Minions are coming out of the Clan Castle. The Town Hall is the Town Hall going down. Sneaky goblins, everything is going on with the clan castle. Town hall is falling. Second star oh. <laughs> should be on the board. Yeah, even if just barely, that still is going to give him a lot of breathing space for the back end now as these Pekkas loop around. There's no more jump spells, so they're going to have to smash through walls the old-fashioned way. A bit of a strange uh, 
I don't know if I call that an oversight or just a willingness uh, to commit a long time for this invasion now. He's got a single target Inferno trying to heat him up, and that's going to actually get the hop over the wall of the Royal Champion to finally finish it off. Forces out the ability. Sad news for him, but he will be able to get lots of value smashing down those Builder Huts. Scattershot hasn't yet gotten a lock on that gets most of that splash damage. Oh, yeah, it just got a really good shot off right there on those Barbarians. Yeah, the Royal Champion is not going to take down this Scatter. Maybe the Pekka can do that job, but now everything is relying on those heroes. There is still... One wizard tower for Splash on this back, and he's now starting with those bats. He needs to make sure that they're staying alive. He has two freezes. The wizard tower at the bottom side is going to go down, so we can freeze those expos if he would like to. We can freeze the defending queen as well. Is he going to freeze it? Yes, one more freeze left. There is the freeze, but he's missing that defending queen. The Pekka are going for the wall. The queen's those bats dead. Can... Wait. Blunderbuss shot from the Grand Warden. Pirate, and look at that! Taps the Genshin emblem on his jersey! Gonna put his headphones back on and celebrate with the boys, because that is a three-star! So Kensan did everything they had to do to bring this match to the last deciding attack. Because this one is incredibly close, because now ZBB needs that three star as well. Otherwise, they're going to lose on stars, even though they have so like they have so many more percentage points on their uh, on their side. But the stars are the, the first important factor in this matchup. So ZBB has to go in all in. Otherwise, well, even though they had a great start, they might lose this one. Well, they know the task that is ahead of them. They've been able to put up big star showings in the past. We've seen 13 from them. Can they just get 12 now? It's all now on the line. Lore, the final striker. We've seen great moves from him in his previous hit. But can he do it again? A two star 77%. 72% with Dragbat on his last try, and he's bringing it back once again with two single target Infernos in the interior. Bats could get really good value against the center of the space, but how is he going to pat these dragons around to keep them safe from that crucial compartment? Yeah, that's a really good question, especially with the sweeper setup. I'm not sure if he's going to go into the eagle and not sure what he's about to do against this uh, the, against, against the sweeper overall but maybe he's just going to start with those with those uh, bats at the top side but wait a second all of those witches came out of the clan cast he has no poison he needs to hurry up he needs to be quickly with this queen maybe make her invisible or something queen but the witches are there he's making them invisible but the town hall is not getting targeted the town hall is going to stay up he he used the invisibility spell way too late oh no that is another game changer and heartbreaker for ZBB. With the Town Hall still up, he has to commit out here. A battle blimp sends in the Siege Machine just for the Town Hall. That was an unfortunate swap. He had intended to play that for the Stone Slammer, and instead, a Dragon Rider is going to come crashing down to the Earth to that Giga Bomb. I don't know if he's got enough to finish this off now. With the CC troops still alive, that's even more distraction in that crucial compartment that he has to take down with the bats quickly. Yeah, indeed, and especially he's now missing on that power with that siege machine on the dragon part. He's trying to delay the vulnerability as long as possible until his dragons are going to engage that defending queen. Now, as those loons are engaging that queen, he's using the vulnerability. There is the tank giant for the wizard tower. But there is actually a Tesla for like a couple of Tesla at least to make the life of this giant not the best against the sweeper. <laughs> I, I was talking about it. I was talking about the sweeper, and that sweeper could cost big time against those dragons. And with the back end scatter, those bats, they won't touch like they won't get the get the finish off this base. Well, he pops the freeze off uh, to get the sweeper down. Now sends in another freeze for the wizard tower. I think he's done an admirable job cleaning up as best he can for the back end, but needs to get that air defense down with these bats, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Ultimately, there were a couple of things that just did not go in Lore's favor there. Missing the town hall out of the beginning might have been the uh, stumbling block here in his toe the trip up that prevented him from getting the triple the loss of that siege machine was just too much and you can see 
the difficulty of defeat on his face now. But hey, this is victory for one team.